Hey there, AV here. This is a little weird because I don't have my little face and the camera going, but I just started playing Fallout 4, and again, I've been play I've played it before, but I'm back in after the show inspired me and this amazing America Rising 2 mod just released. Uh, not completely new, but it's been out for a little bit. Anyways, um, and I started playing and I thought I should maybe I should show you this stuff. This this was, is my current load order. Um, just a heads up, after the recent patch, there's a lot of bugs and stuff going on right now. The next gen update hasn't been great. It's been a little wonky. So don't take any of this as um, like guarantee that these are going to work. This is basic. This is um, it's. I haven't fully tested it out yet, so I don't know for sure. But um, I'm basically using the same load order I had before from a long time ago, pre-update, you know, a few years ago. Um, it's just been slightly modified, and also you know, my tastes have changed a little bit. But I wanted to go through it and give you guys, uh, I guess, some example of things that are pretty good obviously so starting i'm going to go through each one kind of quick so we have the unofficial fallout 4 patch i think it's important um now america rising is this huge like dlc sized thing uh that i've been waiting on for a long time i've been following it ever since i, I played some of the first one i stopped playing it once i heard about this one and waited for this to come out I know this is probably going to be better on PC. I'm on Xbox, but um, I, you know, I can't wait. <laughs> I, I, my PC isn't set up yet for Xbox or for um, Fallout 4, so this is where I'm at. But anyway, so we have um, America Rising and the patches for some Creation Club content that I have. We have armor and weapon keywords. This is a requirement for a mod I have later down my load order, but that's for Andrew CX's um, UCO mod, which is really amazing. I haven't fully tested all of, all of these out post next gen, so just keep that in mind. But this is stuff I used before, so I feel somewhat confident that it should be okay. Um, USO is what I use so much. I'm a builder. I like to create things, so this is amazing. It basically gives you access to all sorts of objects that are in the game that you'll see in the world chairs, whatever objects, and it lets you place them in your settlement. And they actually have, um, I believe they all have costs. Um, then these are some patches for um, some Creation Club content. Really all it does is give me access to those settlement build items without having to do that content myself. Um, so I can immediately from the beginning of the game start placing stuff from Shroud Manor or whatever. Uh, then this one is by the same person who made uh, America Rising 2. This is a distributed DLC level list. Now, normally I would use Integrated Commonwealth by Andrew CX, but I really liked some features from this one. This one, it has some scripts in here, and you can read the description if you want. But basically what it does is it will um, check all your, your game data for items from Creation Club, from the DLCs, and if you have them, it will distribute them throughout the world. And you, there's options, which is really fun for, I think, different playthroughs. When you first jump into the game, you'll get a pop-up. It's going to say, like, you have a choice to choose between these items, like, you know, Creation Club, guns, whatever. Um, you can choose if you want them to only appear in the world after you've done the quest, or you can choose uh, if you want them to appear in the game right away, but there's three tiers. You can make a standard, which is just regular guns and stuff. Then there's, um, as it says down here, there's Wacky and Unhinged. Wacky will add stuff like the Zet and Arsenal, so like the alien weapons and stuff, and then Wacky adds stuff like the Doom weapon which is pretty cool. I'll never use those, but I could see myself wanting to do a playthrough with those at some point. And this is just another patch for Creation Club, a Nuka World Workshop. So the reason these are all set up that way is because these are all forced to the top of the load order. This is actually this one right here is where I can finally start 
moving these around. Um, so I have placed these in a way that's based on the same way I set up my Skyrim load order and similar to how I would do it on PC. So, which is basically like you have major mods at the top. You know, on PC, this is where I would put Beyond Skyrim Bruma. Then you have mods that change, um, like patch basic functions of the game. Then I get into stuff that is editing quests and stuff. So now we have um, this. This integrates. Um, actually, this makes this work with um, this kind of like UCO. It lets me use the Creation Club clothes with like armor pieces. Creation Club delayed. I um, really hope this gets updated sometime soon so that for the new content that just released. But right now, all of the previous content um, pre next gen patch. This will prevent those from triggering the second you start your game. So instead of getting 50 quests, at least for right now, you're just going to get the three new quests that come with the free uh, Creation Club Next Gen update. Radiant Quest Marker. This is just a personal preference for me. This um, it just lets you know when you when there's like one of those quests that repeat forever. This lets you know that that's what this quest is. So it has some appear in your quest menu in a certain way. So you're not doing quests over and over again thinking there will be an end when there's not. This um, lets me skip. Um, I can complete the Nuka World storyline without having to um, go back and raid settlements. I don't want to do that. Yes, defense. I tried to research this. This is kind of an old mod. I mean, not that old. It was updated for 2.04, um, an official patch. So I'm not sure if this was, one is still going to work, uh, but this is supposed to make it so that way when you um, your defense is really high for your settlement, you don't need to worry about having to run back to defend everybody. These are some patches for USO. This one is, well, this one gives me objects from the DLCs. This one boosts the performance. So instead of having the objects spin around, they don't. This is a current patch for the next gen update that there is a, a menu that would cause a crash or a freeze. I did test it out for myself. It did cause a freeze for me. So I have the patch, and that prevents that from happening by just removing those menu items. And I have Cheat Terminal, which is pretty crucial, I think. It lets me do all sorts of things. Um, you can make a new save. You can boost your character level. You can change your name, which would you know, create a new save. That's what I meant. You can give yourself items. So for me, um, it means that I can, when I make a new game, I can set up my character how I want and, you know, not have to like run to go find these items just so I could have my starter character gear that I have, that I have in my head for my character. Uh, this is necessary for another mod that I'm using. Uh, this is just a, some a settlement menu manager. It helps out with. It, it, would, it would be used for like if you needed to uninstall any mod that uses this, you would be able to just uninstall them and it wouldn't mess your game up. But that's not why I have it. I have it just so I could use it in another mod. This is the best cloud storage that I could find. I've searched a lot on Xbox, um, Bethesda. This is the best one I can find. I personally think I would prefer one that was not custom objects, didn't have custom textures. So that way it wouldn't be a 61 megabyte file size. There are a few of those, like the provisioner storage crate, but they don't have the storage options. This is very OCD friendly for someone like me. Like there's a, a chest for each thing that you can imagine labeled cleanly for all the ammo types. And then it also has like weapon racks um, that you, and they're cloud storage. So I can put it on one, place these objects on one settlement that I want to be my base. And if I want to have multiple bases, they all have access to the same things. So I'm not limited to having to like run all the way to Sanctuary. I could have a base at Sanctuary, or Spectacle Island, wherever I want. Looks Mirror is a more immersive way to change my character's appearance. I do have Cheat Terminal, so you could do it in Cheat Terminal. I don't want to do that. Um, now, yeah, looks So I, I would just place this somewhere, and then you can walk up to it and interact with it. Locksmith 
I do know from experience you have to have this below look smear or they could um, conflict. This just lets me lock doors. It sounds like not a big deal, but there's some places like Red Rocket where you have a lot of doors, dog meats running around everywhere. I want to lock doors because I don't want um, certain doors to be used. I might want to put wood or um, a, something in front of it so it's, it's not meant to be used at all so I can lock it. And then the game treats it as basically like a barricaded door. Like your character can't open it if you try to. He'll be like, uh, I don't know. I can't remember what comment he says. Like, oh, it's, it's bashed or something like that. I don't know. Savage Beacons, I haven't tested this myself. I just wanted it. I like the idea of it. It just means um, when you're running around out there, I could place down a beacon, put my junk in a chest, and then a settler that I have assigned to this can come and pick it up for me. Simple Camping. This is kind of like, uh, I think the mod was called Conquest, but a lot easier. It's by Andrew CX, and most of his stuff is pretty solid, at least in my opinion. And this one just lets you place down like a temporary settlement. You could make a campfire. You can make like sleeping bags and chairs and stuff. I think you can cook on it and you can take it up when you're done. It's pretty cool. It's immersive. I like it. This is a mod that seriously, I was going to make a mod because this was like the one thing I wanted. And this was something I was, I wanted to make, but, um, I was just so happy that someone else did it because I didn't, I wouldn't have known what to do and it would have been a struggle, but this is exactly what I wanted. Um, there's so many places that I really loved, but like what all this mod does is it lets you place down a trap door, like a, like a literal trap door or like a bunker door or actual some wooden doors too. Um, and when you interact with it, there's multiple options, multiple choices. And when you interact with that object, it'll actually take you to a, an assigned cell to that trap door. So I'm going to be using it in my build today at Red Rocket, um, which is amazing. So you can have like, there's another mod I have called, uh, and we'll get down to it later, but it lets me make a settlement anywhere. So I could potentially use that mod to make a settlement anywhere, drop one of these basements there. I'm not sure if those will go together. I haven't tested it. If not, my what I will be using it for is like places like Red Rocket, where you kind of feel like immersion wise, it doesn't make sense for me to have like all my shit just like on display here. Or maybe I just want to have like a secret spot, like where all my storage is. I like the idea of having a cool basement and I can plop this down anywhere and use it for my builds. Now this is from uh, an amazing modder, um, I can't remember his uh, username on here, but it's like Sean SM or MS, something like that. Um, he made this amazing grenade expansion pack that I used for years, <laughs> but I don't have the space for it on here. And also with how wonky Xbox is, in my experience, it's best to really, really limit how many mods you have messing with the leveled list. This mod does add a little bit to level list, but a lot less than the grenade expansion pack would. So this is just the grenade launcher, um, which I really enjoy. I have like a core memory of going into the basement, getting the legendary one. And it's something that just I have to have for my playthroughs. Um, tactical flashlights. I love the Pip-Boy fl flashlight. It's amazing. It's um, nostalgia, but sometimes I want a realistic one that isn't doesn't have to be attached to a helmet on my head. And these offer like little cool ones you can place on your character and you can still wear a lot of head items with them. I think they take over like the eyeglass slot. So that's how that works. Um, Wasteland Imports. This has been recently updated uh, by Odd Little Turtle. So I, I trust it. I like her work. She's, I feel like she's pretty well known at this point. Um, I liked Wasteland Imports before. It was fun. It added a few things I enjoy, specifically the NCR hat. I, re I like that a lot. And some magazines and stuff are fun. Little um, pieces, uh, you know, references to New Vegas. So I enjoy that a lot. So I wanted to have that. This does a lot to level list. So the way you want to set everything up is you want, when it comes to level list stuff, I want, like, I have it set up this way because. Here's a grenade launcher. 
if it conflicts with tactical flashlights, I want tactical flashlights to overwrite those instances. And if either of these conflict with wasteland imports, I want wasteland imports to overwrite those. Because I can always create the tactical flashlights in the chemistry lab, and I can always find the legendary grenade launchers. So I don't need these two to be in level list. If I was on PC, I would probably remove them from level list. Um, then down here we have sound. So I have the Fallout Suite. This is just something I've used for a very long time. It adds um, a little more music to the uh, Fallout game, obviously. But like uh, I feel like it has a little bit more of a fantasy vibe to it. So I, I like it. I enjoy it. I've, played, I've used it for so long I can't play the game without it. Old World Tunes, uh, back in the day, I used to watch a lot of um, ShoddyCast and on YouTube. I enjoyed watching the Fallout lore content. This has that voice actor um, you know, being a DJ for this radio station, so I like having that. I like having a little variety, so I have a few more. of. I went through all the Old World radio stations, and these were the ones I liked the most. So I kept these. They're also low file size. And they don't have ridiculous uh, sound issues. I did kind of like the Tumbleweeds one, but it's like super loud and like crystal clear. These are not as clear. They're lower volume. And of course, with the tape, you can lower the settings, but these sound like they could be on a radio. Radio Silence is a radio that is no sound at all, but it allows you to, when you don't want to hear the ambient music, but you don't want to listen to a radio, maybe you want to listen to your own music through Spotify or something, then you can click on this rate, this radio station and do that. Going through all the landscape mods, there's a ton of them on Xbox now. I, I kind of liked Borealis, but it had some weird texture issues on some rocks. And the distant LOD still shows like the tan, dead, colored terrain. I think the LOD with the Borealis only updates like trees and rocks. It doesn't update like the the tan grass in the distance. I feel like this mod is the best of both worlds. It gives you a little bit of green, a little bit of green grass everywhere. There's trees that look nice. They're kind of detailed. But at the same time, you'll still see brown grass everywhere too. So the distant lod actually still fits. It doesn't look out of place. Then I have vivid waters because I also have vivid weathers. And down here, this is just a little quality of life mod that means when you exit a terminal, your character will resume whatever position they were in before. So if you're a crouch, you'll go back to crouching. Whereas the default vanilla game, you always go back to a standing position, so you look like a fucking idiot in the middle of a combat because you wanted to jump on a terminal. This one is weapon drop standalone. It's just something I've always used. It lets you... It's, normally when you hold X, you put away your weapon. And normally in the game, if your weapon's out, it's always pointed at the ready. Weapon drop, you can hold X, and your character will just lower their gun. But they'll still have it out. So I like that. Receiver only, when I used to play um, Fallout 4 earlier, a long time ago, I personally would get confused sometimes between the combat shotgun and the combat rifle because they have the same, they look kind of the same. So this changes the way the receiver part of the combat rifle looks. So they, they're visually different looking. You won't, they won't look the same anymore. That's just something I use for me. NCR Outfit Pack, I have not tested this. I'm hoping it works. I tried my best to research it, but I really couldn't find too many complaints about it, so I think it should be okay. Um, it's by Fried Turkey, which I believe... I don't know if they worked with um, the Wasteland or the Capital Wasteland, but I think these are from that. I'm not sure. Anyways, I just wanted some fun armors, so I have that here. I like this. I don't um, I don't really want to get too much into this because I don't want too many spoilers, but this allows me to get some cybernetic things that somebody has, which normally 
Um, you normally can't do that. And this is just for like a um, character choice or a playthrough. If you want to do, if you want to have cybernetic implants, then you could, by playing the game, you can add this to your character. And that could be how they earn that or whatever. Half gas masks are because the default game gas masks, I'm pretty sure they occupy your entire head. I could be misremembering. This lets me have a gas mask, still have my glasses on, still have a hat. So I like these. Cigarette and mouth. Um, I don't know. I just always like making my character have a cigar or something. Not so much anymore, but I've just always had this, so I, I still want it in my game. Ghoul mask. That's a reference to Fallout 3. Um, that's the only reason it's here. I played Fallout 3. It's my favorite Fallout. I just wanted this. I had the space for it. It's a quest line where you can unlock a ghoul mask, which is supposed to, when you wear it, deter ghouls from trying to attack you. Beastmaster is um, a mod that lets you basically take advantage of those cages you can create with the contraptions deals here, whichever one it is, I can't remember. Uh, so instead of just capturing animals and making them fight or letting them walk around your settlement, you can actually they can become a companion. You can give them a name. You can change their paint on them. You can make them wear saddlebags or whatever. It's pretty cool. This one I haven't tested out, but it's by Andrew CX, so I, I trust it. This just makes your settlers immortal and adds more variety to their appearance. Normally, you'll realize really quick all the settlers kind of look the same. Place pack Brahmins with iBots. If you've ever had lots of settlements with provisioners walking around between settlements, you'll notice that the Brahmin, the big huge Brahmin, they get stuck in stuff all the time. This, for me, it makes it a little easier, especially because I usually like to switch out settlers for robots for my provisioner supply lines. So it's just, I think it looks better seeing a robot, like just a couple of robots going between settlements. This adds Ed E from Fallout New Vegas. I've tested this out. It seems to work okay. I fast traveled to a few spots. I um, assigned him to them to a settlement and I fast traveled and they didn't keep following me. So it seems like this works. It's a pretty simple quest to obtain. It makes sense. I like it. Modable Robot Sellers lets you keep um, special robots like Professor Goodfields or Deezer. Whereas normally when you take that settlement, those they will just disappear for some reason from existence. This will let you modify them and keep them around. Now for hair and customization, like character creation customization, there really isn't a lot of options um, if you want kind of a vanilla feel. So the best I could find were these two. I don't. They're old. They've been around since like, I think 2016 or 2018. But from my experience, they seem to work. There's a tiny lag when you switch between female or male in the creation menu. But other than that, uh, there's lots of hairstyles, more than enough for me to choose from. And it meets my needs. Beards and stashes. Uh, I have this instead of lots more beards because this has like 300 beards where lots more beards only has like 100. So this actually has more options and it, I feel like it's a little bit more organized. Though there is one beard in lots more beards that I don't have that I, I miss. It was a straight flush beard with like the sides. And I think I got pretty close to it on my current character, but... This is supposed to fix a third person beard issue. I saw other people have complaints about it, so I have it here, though I haven't experienced any of those issues. This is a mod that just makes the hair tones look better. In the game, I felt like they were kind of, the colors were kind of flat. The black didn't really look like a true black. Um, the other colors looked kind of faded. This just makes all the colors look more vibrant and the texture I feel like look, just looks a little better. If I were to compare it to Skyrim, I feel like this would be kind of like, uh, what was that one mod? I think it was called like Weathered or Wet or something like that. I don't know. Uh, let's see. The Salt and Wind. It reminds me of Salt and Wind. The Salt and Wind mod from, from Skyrim. This is, 
I used to use NAT, uh, NAC, a Natural Atmospheric uh, Commonwealth. That was my favorite weather lighting mod. I do feel like that mod has better lighting on players, but I hate, I, and I'm sorry to say it, but I hate the way that one makes the rad storms. It makes the rad storms red. In my opinion, the rad storms should be green. That's what they are. That's what they've always been in Fallout 4. Uh, uh, I just can't stand it. So I switched to Vivid Weathers, and honestly, I'm more of a fantasy type person. I prefer things to be vibrant, have a little bit more color to it. So Vivid Weathers really hits the spot. It's The sunsets and sunrises are amazing. The rad storms are still green. And there's even like little snowflakes in the rad storms, and it's just so cool. Vivid Weather, I have the patches for that, and then no snow under the roof. Um, that makes it so that way when it's raining or whatever, you can walk in like red rocket and the rain won't be still going inside. SDS all in one. I haven't fully tested this out. This one should be okay. From what I've read, it shouldn't break pre-combines. Um, as long as you're careful about what you do and you're very frugal with what you scrap. I am, I feel like because of this mod though, it does slightly conflict with that basement mod I was telling you about, but only in that when I'm in the basement mod and I'm trying to scrap like a desk or a shelf or something, sometimes SDS is kicking in and it's showing me the trash on the floor. All it is is like, I guess the hitbox for some of those items are larger. So I have to scrap something so I can see the other thing that I need to scrap. Like it won't appear scrappable until I have these other items out of the way, like the trash or whatever. But I haven't seen it break anything yet. I just personally, from knowing how the game is, I would just be careful with how you use it. You know, don't overdo it. In Settlement Overpass, um, this just adds a stairwell to um, Grey Garden, and I can't remember the other, but there's these two settlements that have an overpass right above it, and it adds a little um, stairways so you can get up and down there if you want to build up on top. Workshop Anywhere. This is a mod that's also kind of like I think it was Conquest or there's another mod that lets you build anywhere. It's, this one's by Andrew CX so it's stable. Um, it's I feel like it's reliable. You need to just always keep in mind the nature of Fallout 4 and, and that it can be wonky. So you don't want to just build absolutely anywhere. You wouldn't want to put one of these in downtown Boston where the game's already kind of has some issues. But if you're out somewhere and there's not a lot of enemy spawns nearby, I feel like this is a pretty cool mod to have and you can place it at a few locations and have a cool little base. I have a video on my YouTube where I use this mod to build in Lynchwood up on a hill. I built it like a nice little home over there between this mod and Place Anywhere. Place Anywhere is pretty much a mandatory mod for me. It allows me to resize items in the game. It allows me to um, remove global collision so I can place an object anywhere, like floating in the air if I want. It lets me um, make objects static so I could place in like a cup on a desk and then I can make it static so it won't get knocked over. There are a few quirks with it but uh, you'll learn those as you go. The main quirk that I can think of right now is if I remember right it's been a while but if you do like make a an object static exactly where you want it and you leave somewhere like you fast travel away and then you come back that object will be slightly in, lowered into the object you place at. All you have to do is then raise it with the Place Anywhere menu, which you can do with the Place Anywhere settings menu. You can maneuver an object, their orientation in any direction, really. They would just raise it up a couple steps, and then it'll stay there forever, just like that. UCO is a mod that is pretty extensive. It lets you... The main thing that I enjoy is you can pretty much wear armor over most uh, clothing that looks like it should be under armor or like you could wear armor over it. 
And it also has lots of other fun features like changing the material swatches on items to make them look like camo or whatever it is you want. I think that I've read that the material swatching isn't working on next gen or after the next gen update. I can't confirm that I haven't tested it, but that's something I've read. So that piece may not work. I'm not entirely sure if this mod fully still works right now. I think it does. Anyways, and then start me up. This is such an important mod. This lets you, this is basically alternate start from Skyrim, but f for Fallout 4. This lets you either, you could have the choice to have the vanilla start like you would normally start uh, in pre-war, or you can um, skip the vanilla start, but still have the vanilla story, like where you're the main character, Sean's your son and all that stuff. Or you can choose like an alternate start. You could choose a fun number of new places to start your character in. And my favorite part is you can pick perks like Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas, like four eyes, claustrophobic, small frame, things like that. It's super cool. You can choose your starting items. You can choose um, starting location. You can choose your level. It's pretty awesome. And yeah, so that's my entire load order. And I think I'm going to stop streaming right now. I'm going to relabel this as like my next gen load order. And then I'm going to start up the stream again because I want to, uh, I just want to build a little bit at Red Rocket. Talk to you.